Hello everyone, David Lee here back with another video of a project-based learning and design thinking project. I hope you enjoy it. For this project, our fourth grade students were provided with the following scenario. A country has found a new region and now has claimed it as their territory. This region has its own unique land features, bodies of water, weather, climate, earth processes, and geological history. Before it can be settled by inhabitants, the country's leaders would like to learn more about the region. So a group of geologists were sent out to start a geological survey. Students were introduced with the following driving question that guided them throughout the project. How do we as geologists gather geological information that would be valuable to future community settlements? The final product of the project was a geological survey that consisted of aerial photos, a topographic map, geological data, and a solution to a geohazard. Before starting on the survey, each student was given the choice of creating one of four different Minecraft worlds using seed numbers. These Minecraft worlds would represent the new territory that their country claimed. Here are the directions on how to create the worlds using seed numbers. The first part of the survey were the aerial photos, which are usually captured by air or spacecraft so that geologists can map out the region and also study its features. Here are the directions that were given. For our aerial photos, students used Minecraft Pocket Edition in creative mode to fly and take screenshots on their iPads. They labeled the landforms and bodies of water on their aerial photos using Google Slides. Up next was the topographic map. A map that shows mountains and valleys on a flat piece of paper and uses the contour lines to show where the hills and valleys are and how steep they are. Every point of the contour line has the same elevation. Lines close to form curved shapes. And lines drawn closer together represent steep ground. And lines drawn farther apart represent flatter ground. To teach this concept, we had students create their own mountainous landforms out of clay and slice them into layers with the thinner slices for the steeper parts of their clay mountain. They then traced each slice onto a piece of paper and then labeled the highest peak, the flattest part, and the steepest part of their clay mountain. They used their newly acquired knowledge to create a topographic map of their Minecraft region. First, we had students place a grid over their screenshot. Then they traced out the bodies of water and then colored them blue so that they can clearly see the landforms left over. From there, students drew in their contour lines for their mountainous regions, where steeper grounds were represented with closer drawn contour lines, while flatter grounds were represented with farther apart contour lines. And finally, they colored their landforms and then labeled the highest elevation, a steeper slope, a gradual slope, and flat lands. Next, students worked on gathering geological data. We chose to focus on the effects of weathering, erosion, and deposition on their region. Weathering is a process where rocks are worn away or broken down into smaller pieces by wind, water, or plants. Erosion is the act of moving tiny pieces of rock or soil from one place to another. Deposition is where the tiny pieces of rock or soil land or deposit. To help students get a better understanding of these concepts, we did a quick learning activity using dirt, water, and a plastic bottle. Students made a mound of dirt in a plastic bottle and placed it on a slant. They then blew on the mound of dirt and poured water to demonstrate weathering. The water and wind carried down the dirt, demonstrating erosion, and finally deposited at the end of the bottle, demonstrating deposition. To collect geological data, we decided to work on a nearby hillside that would represent one of the mountainous regions in their Minecraft aerial photo. We designated a 6x6 foot spot on the hill for data retrieval and analysis. The 4th graders had to document the height of a dirt mound found in the designated spot, the amount of vegetation, and the width and depth of a depression. They returned to the same spot after a night of rainfall to document data one more time. At the end, students used the data to write an informative piece on the weathering, erosion, and deposition that occurred to their hillside. We 
we added onto the PBL scenario by stating the following. Your team of geologists have learned that your region is on a boundary, where many earthquakes occur. The government has requested that you design earthquake resistant structures that will reduce the impact of the geohazard. The fourth graders used the design thinking process to ideate multiple possible solutions and rapid prototype their structures. They carried out tests and identified failure points to their structures by using a shake table created by Mr. Bycraft. Next year, we hope to give students more geohazard options so that there will be more variety of solutions to different geohazards. For example, solutions to tsunamis or volcanic eruptions. Well, that wraps up our video. Hope it has given you a glimpse of what is possible when incorporating project-based learning and design thinking into education. I would like to give a special thanks to the following people for making this project happen. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you would enjoy content similar to this. Check out the description for more links and of course thank you so much for watching. See you next time.